Okay, this is part two of section 4.3, polynomial division, the remainder theorem, and the factor theorem. Okay, I want to go over each of those briefly, just to kind of give you a little bit of a background and what's going on there. So first, let's talk about the remainder theorem, which is really interesting. Um, it's, well, you'll see. All right, and I'll just do an example to illustrate what the remainder theorem says. So let's say, for example, that we have a function x squared minus 3x minus 5. Okay, and let's say we wanted to find f of negative 1. Okay, well, a simple function like this, it's easy to plug that in and figure it out. I could plug it in, simplify that. That's going to be a positive 1 plus 3 minus 5. And that will give me negative 1. Okay, now let's, for a second, say, okay, cool, that, that's the solution. Let's say we had a much more complicated problem and it went on for a while, right? Like an x to the seventh or something like that, right? Well, you could use the remainder theorem to figure out the same answer, right? The same value, okay? Which would be, what if I took, let's say, x squared, x and a constant, and I put my coefficients, and then I divided it by that neg with that negative 1. Well, if I drop down the 1 times the negative 1, that gives me a negative 1. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Times the negative 1 is a positive 4. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. Look at the remainder. Uh, there we go. The remainder and the function value are the same, right? That's the remainder theorem. You can use synthetic division or polynomial division in general to figure out a function value if you're dealing with a polynomial. You just do synthetic division with the number you want to plug in, whatever the remainder comes out to be, is the same thing as if you would have plugged it in. Now, again, maybe it's easier to plug it in. Maybe it's easier to do synthetic division. You have options now. Okay, that's all that's about. So that's the remainder theorem. Let's go on to the factor theorem. So the factor theorem is a really interesting one because it's a new way to go about factoring. Okay, and so we know how to factor things, right? We factor x squared uh, minus 10x plus 21, right? We can factor that uh, pretty easily, okay? Um, but what if we added terms, right? right start adding it makes it more complicated and the more complicated it gets the more we need things like the factor theorem to help us out okay so i'll get rid of all of this and i will explain quickly what the factor theorem says so the factor theorem relies on those zeros right those numbers that you plug into a function that make it equal zero right so i'm just going to use the letter c for that you plug the letter c into a function and it equals zero okay well then it turns out that when you go to factor the function f of x, right, whatever that function happens to be, x minus that zero that you found is one of the factors. Okay, we'll have to figure out what goes in the next blank there. But x minus c is one of the factors. That's the factor theorem, right? If you're dealing with a polynomial and you happen to know one of the zeros, you can plug in that zero or plug in the number and it turns out that it gives you zero then you can partially factor by just x minus whatever that number happens to be. All right, so, so let's do an example here. Let me not erase that. I'll leave that up there. Okay, let's do an example. Uh, example 2, I believe. All right, so we want to factor the polynomial. f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared minus 10x plus 24. And I want to use a combination of the remainder theorem and the factor theorem. Okay? And so, I am going to look for the, the zeros that when I figure them out, I can plug in here. Okay? And I'm going to use the, the remainder theorem to do that. Okay? In addition to the factor theorem. Let me not make that too big. Okay? Remember, any number that I plug in that gives me zero 
will be put here. And if I plug in another one, let's say C2, then I would, and so on. Okay, so anyway, let me not put too many letters. All right, so let's do synthetic division. So we have x to the third, x squared, x and a constant. Coefficients are 1, negative 3, negative 10, and 24. Now there are ways of kind of guessing the numbers to plug in first. I'll generally just say start off with 1, see if you get a remainder of 0. If you don't, backtrack, try negative 1. See if you get a remainder of 0. You don't, backtrack. It's actually not as complicated as it sounds. So let me run through it. 1. Drop down the first 1. 1 times 1 is positive 1. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Uh, negative 10 minus 2 is negative 12. 1 times negative 12 is negative 12. 24 minus 12 is a positive 12. Not a 0. So therefore, not what I want. So let me try something different. Let me try negative 1. You still bring down that first 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Negative 1 times negative 4 is a positive 4. Negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6. Negative 1 times negative 6 is a positive 12. Okay, yeah, that's not going to give me a 0 for my remainder, so backtrack. What about 2? All right, well, bring down the first 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 10 minus 2 is negative 12. 2 times negative 12 is negative 24. Oh, there we go. 24 minus 24 is 0. I found my first 0, which means that goes in that blank. Now, I can keep going, right? So I know 1, negative 1 are no good. I can try 2 again. Okay, because it's possible that 2 occurs twice, right? There's no reason why you couldn't have that. So drop down the 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Right? Uh, and then 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 12 plus 2 is negative 10. Okay, I'm ignoring all this because that's irrelevant now, right? Um, this is not 0. So therefore, 2 is no good. I'm going to move on to... Okay, let's see. I want to keep that. There we go. I just want to get rid of the 2. Let's go on to 3. 3 times 1 is 3. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Negative 12 plus... Okay, yeah, that's not going to work. Let's try negative 3, right? We're just going down the line. 1, negative 1. 2, negative 2. 3, negative 3. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Negative 3 times negative 4 is a positive 12. Negative 12 plus 12 is 0. There we go. Negative 3. So if I plug in a negative 3 right here, that really changes it to a plus 3, right? These two negatives become a positive, so we're going to write plus 3. And then the last one, you don't have to worry about too, too much, because look at this. 1 minus 4 that's actually, I divided that one out, I divided that one out. X minus 4, minus 4 is the last one. Okay, you see it right here. 1x minus 4. That last one will always be the last parentheses. Okay, let's see. Maybe we can do one more. By the way, before I go on, if I wanted to find or solve this equation, right? I technically already did, but I could set this equal to zero and solve each of them individually. But these, this one and this one, and then, well, at least those two are the first two solutions. All right, let's do one more. And we'll be done with section 4.3. Okay, let's factor the polynomial. x to the fourth plus 11x to the third plus 41x squared, plus 61x, plus 30. Okay, so I'm going to set up 
my parentheses. I'm putting four of them because it's x to the fourth power, so I should have four if all ends well. All right, and x to the fourth, x cubed, x squared, x constant, coefficients of 1, 11, 41, 61, and 30. And I want, again, I want the remainder to be 0, so I need to make sure that I'm going to have to introduce some negatives. Notice they're all positive numbers, right? These are all positive, so I'm not even going to bother plugging in a positive 1, positive 2, and so on. I'm going to start off with a negative 1. 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. 11 minus 1 is 10. Times negative 1 is negative 10. 41 minus 10 is 31. Times negative 1 is negative 31. 61 minus 31 is 30. Negative 1 times 30 is negative 30. 30 minus 30 is 0. Okay, negative 1 gets plugged in here. Of course, that just makes this a plus 1. Okay, let's go on. Let's try... We could try negative 1 again, but I'll save time and just go to negative 2. No, negative 1 is not going to work again. I know because I made up the problem. All right, drop down the 1 times negative 2. 10 minus 2 is 8 times negative 2. 31 minus 16 is 15 times negative 2. 30 minus 30 is 0. Okay, so negative 2 works. If I plug in a negative 2 here, I get a plus 2. Okay, uh, negative 2 won't work again. Again, I know because I made this problem up. Let me try that again. Straight line. It's better. Okay, bring down the 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. 8 minus 3 is 5. Notice it gets shorter and shorter as you go, right? Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. 15 minus 15 is 0. Negative 3 works. You see why I picked these numbers, right? So plug in a negative 3 right here, minus a negative 3 is really plus 3. Okay, and then the last one. Notice I have 1 and a positive 5. When I divide it by negative 1, I knock that down. Divide it by negative 2, I knock that one down. When I divide it by negative 3, I knock that one down. So what's left is x and a constant. 1x and a positive 5, x plus 5. x plus 5 is my last parentheses. So there we go, I factored it. All right, that's the factor theorem, remainder theorem in, well, polynomial division, section 4.3.